Can we really climb 800 meters of rock? How am I gonna arrange the gauchos? I wonder if the Tyrolean is gonna hold. I hope that Alan and I climb well together. Do we really need a number five I hope camp? I'm not allergic to bees. What's the river gonna Am be I like? Am I fit enough for I this? I'm strong enough that we don't this? die on the rafts. Are we strong enough? Is this even possible Ow. for us? Ow. Yeah. Is there yeah. You ready to go? Yeah. The idea for the Paritas came about uh, when I was talking to Tess and we decided that we both were looking at getting some objective in Patagonia that had a little bit of an exploratory side to it. And after doing some research, we found that the Paritas Valley looked like a really good fit for what we wanted. Um, Alan and I hadn't really climbed a whole lot together before this trip. Uh, we actually hadn't climbed at all together before this trip. but. Um, we had some mutual friends and it seemed like we had similar goals and similar mindsets and so we made our way down to Patagonia together. Feeling logistically a little strung out right now. Yep. <laughs> this is called extreme alpinism. You know. Persian lady. Persian <laughs> lady. I did my nails yesterday. Boom. So which side do you take? The big side or the little yeah, side? Yeah, that side breaks your ends. Okay, yeah, good to know. You know, you know. Tess and I started off by taking a 45 minute boat ride across the lake, Lago Puelo, to the far side. Uh, and that's where we, we met our gauchos. Uh, our one gaucho, Konono, took us back to his, his home and we got to hang out with his family for a while. Uh, we actually had an extra day there that we weren't supposed to. It was raining a lot, so the river was too high to go on the horses. So we uh, spent one extra day and got to explore their community which truly is on the fringe of society. <laughs> uh, after about a day and a half of waiting, we were actually able to start the horse ride. Um, I had never really been on a horse before, and I think Alan had been on one maybe once or twice. Um, so it was definitely a, a, a point of anxiety for us going into it. Oh god. The horse ride was not what I was expecting. Uh, I knew that we would have some serious riding to do, but this seemed pretty for real on the horseback riding scale. I'm not an expert, but we were going down some really steep hills. We were doing some pretty wild like river crossings. Uh, it seemed way more legit than I was intending it to be. Once we got dropped off the, by the gauchos, we spent um, a, a good part of a day ferrying loads up to this refugio that was actually in pretty good shape. We are about to start our third and final load ferry. To the puesto. To the, to the puesto, to yeah. The Each trip has taken, what, about two and a half hours round trip, you think? Yeah, I reckon. We started hiking up towards the Paritas, which hasn't really seen anyone back there for probably five years. It was a lot of like pretty hard bushwhacking, uh, very physical work. We had to gain a lot of elevation. We were just like full on like warring against the plants and, and losing most of the first day pretty hard. When you think about bushwhacking, you know, it sometimes gets you excited in this, in this like real masochistic way. Uh, uh, yeah, it wasn't, there's nothing about it that was good. You know, I think that definitely pushed us to our, our physical limits and, and our emotional limits as well. Um, but you know, we got, we got through it eventually. 
stupid plants. That was, that was rough. That was a rough time. I think that was the first time that I really questioned what I was doing out there and maybe the only time that I questioned what was going on. Alright, well, we just got into base camp. There it is. It's really pretty, like two hours ago. And we just got a pretty good weather report. So we're gonna try to go Blitz Parita Central. A little intimidated. What do you think, Tess? Yay. Tess is yeah, just psyched. After about an hour of resting and staring up at the Paritas at the perfect good weather, we took a quick inventory of our food and gear and also of our like mental and emotional sides and decided that we, we just had enough to give it one good go. Sleep bivy ledge. So we have a shivered bivy coming up. The, sleep, the sleeping bag just didn't quite make the cut. Um, there's a little full in the pack, so it looks like it's gonna be puffies and some cuddling on some sweet ropes here. Um, it's gonna be great. We got fucking water, we got fruity grains for dinner. Man. Top off our like thousand calorie diet for today. Maybe, maybe a thousand calories. <laughs> Greetings. Tess and I survived our alpine shiver bivy. It was, awful. it was, it was pretty, it was pretty grim. That's probably the best way to describe it. Uh, the view though this morning is really amazing. Doing this shit is rapid. Uh, the climb ended up being great. It, uh, it ended up being one of the easier parts of our journey. Um, the rock quality was great, the weather was great, and it was really, it was just fun. It was just really fun rock climbing. It was pretty moderate through the whole thing. A couple, you know, spicy leads, but besides that it was really, really great climbing. And um, I'm really happy that it turned out to be such a, such a fun route. So we're back. Tess and I finally made it back to our tent uh, after a 14 plus hour descent. It was pretty epic. Uh, that ended with a midnight crossing of a glacier fed stream. Uh, up to the underwear. Up to the underwear for sure. It was it was pretty brutal descent. Uh, but we pulled it off. We did a we blitzed the Parita Central putting up a new route, uh, probably went at 5.9 C1, and it was actually really, really high quality, good climbing fun. Uh, the, I guess it's now like hard to say that you're even, you know, super tired because you've just been in that state so long, it just seems kind of like life. <laughs> Which is good because we still have two more super hard days to go before we could even think about a rest day. The most efficient way for us to get out of the Turbio was uh, on rafts, um, just because we had so much gear with us, because we were in there for so long. 
uh, and also just logistically speaking, it was difficult to be able to get a ride out from the gauchos. Um, so we had about nine hours worth of rafting on these like kids fishing rafts that Alan had brought us. Hey dude, Chip. Yar, matey. <laughs> it's been a long time coming, but we're finally ready to take to the high seas. These are our top of the line paddles. You can't really get better than this in the pack rafting industry. Ultra light. Ultra light, son. Ultra strong. So overall, the, yeah, the rafting was pretty horrible. Um, it, we didn't have too many like epic events. There's one flip that ended up with like me and all this stuff getting pretty wet. Um, but eventually, the uh, the river spit us back into Lago Pueblo, and that was it. We got a boat ride uh, back to town the next day. You know, through the, throughout our experience putting up this new climb in the Paritas Valley, ev we were, every day we were going as hard as we could all the time. Whenever there was a question of, well, should we stop here, should we go on for a little bit more, we always went on hoping that it would pay off in some way, but not really knowing how. And every day we were just totally exhausted, more than we thought possible. And every day we kept doing it again and again and again. So it really doesn't leave a whole bunch of time to process something like this. Um, I'm still kind of working through what we did up there and it's, it's a pretty cool thing. I'm really proud that we went to go do it. On the same hand, what we did was just rock climbing. It wasn't anything really more than that. It was just going out with a, with a good friend and climbing some good rock and having a good, a good day in the mountains. So it's, uh, it's a pretty cool thing to look back and think about and mull over in your brain as the trip has gone on. You know, Alan and I spent a lot of time planning for this trip, we spent a lot of time training for it, and we spent a lot of time thinking about it, and thinking about it in the capacity of like this unattainable dream. And through whatever it was, whether it was, you know, our, our planning or probably just a whole bunch of dumb luck, it really just ended up being, you know, climbing in the mountains with, you know, and having, having a good time with a good friend. I think this idea of first ascents is definitely put on a pedestal, um, and it you know it doesn't need to be. Um, it's nothing outside of what a normal person can do, and it was really really awesome to realize that. I'm gonna turn